Welcome to my humble abode. I am Yorkie the Tailspinner and this is our morning show Tales Over Coffee. A rather early version as it's barely 2am. But we start the day together with a cup of coffee. And a narrative tale in the hopes of welcoming a blessed day. And this is Suzerain. The continuing tale of Anton Rain's rather failed presidency of Swordland. We have made some progress though in uh, setting our acts to uh, ensure equality in education for men and women, that's, or boys and girls, that's good. We've also had the H3 um, highway finish, that's also good. Trade talks to the president of Lesbia. I think we're kind of over a barrel here. After a long whistle, maroon train slowly started to move. This train had been in service for many years. It had nine locomotives with special quarters and an office, as the name implied. It was painted with a bright maroon colour. Among the flashes and cheers, we departed from Holsord Central train station. Our destination was Perla, the capital of Lesbia. The historic route we were using was also called the Southern Express. We passed through the Lesbian mountain range to the lowlands with a short stop at the beautiful Terre Nueva, where Lesbian security forces joined us. Looking outside the window, the difference of wealth between Valgan and Sarani was uh, extraordinary. I heard a knock on the door out to my office on the train and Simon entered. Mr. President, Someone have a seat. He sat down on the chair in front of my desk. I wanted to have a quick chat about Pramis Alvarez, he said, and gave and give you a heads up. There have been some rumours about his demeanour in public appearances. Uh, go on. He is known to have met with other state leaders while intoxicated on various occasions. Some even called him an alcoholic, said Simon. Is this something that could attract the trade deal? I would think so. Honestly, I don't know, said Simon. He handed me a newspaper. The headline was circling over Stalpot. Yes, we read that. This happened just yesterday. Apparently, he was so drunk that he couldn't get off the plane on a diplomatic visit. After this incident, some say he is unfit to serve, but I don't believe that at all. Why? Although his presidency is riddled with these kinds of incidents, I also heard he is a shrewd man. No, I'm worried. I'm sure we'll be fine, Miss President. We are almost at Perla. I will return to my cabin now. Thank you for the heads up, Simon. I'll see you when we arrive. A few minutes later, with a long whistle, our train came to a stop. I waved to the crowd from the window. Lots of reporters that flocked over were pushed away by the lesbian security guards. We made our way to the cars and the convoy began its short trip to the Yellow House. Yellow House was situated at the very centre of Perla, in the middle of a circular park that was off-limits to regular citizens. The park was full of roses on small patches. The convoy came to a stop and I made my way to the entrance. The assistants directed me to a room to await for Prime Minister Alferez. And so I will. I started waiting. I waited for around 10 minutes and there was no sign of Prime Minister Alvarez. It was almost time for our meeting. My chair started to feel uncomfortable. I stood up and walked around to look at the various items in the room. A beautiful golden teapot piqued my interest. Take a look. Started inspecting the teapot. While I was touching it, the handle broke off. Oh, shit. <laughs> Thankfully no one was in the room. Leave it next to the teapot. The door opened and Patricio Alvarez entered. Although I knew he was one of the youngest state leaders in the world right now, I was still surprised by how tall he looked. At his young age, he was leading one of the strongest countries in Eastern Macopa. He was holding his head like he had a, must uh, a headache and he was stumbling. Upon seeing me, he immediately composed himself. We shook hands. Bit of a hangover there, sir. He gestured toward the two couches and we sat down face to face. President Rain, welcome to Perla, said Patricio. Have a seat. I hear a lot about your successes, Mr. Alvarez. Thank you, Mr. Rain. That is very kind of you. I wish I could say the same about you. 
<clears throat> I'm not going to criticize that. All that. No need to argue, right? Oh, we have just met. Exactly, we don't need to waste any time. I smell the strong odor of alcohol. I'm not going to comment on it. Let's begin then. So you're here for the trade deal. What is it about again? Can you remind me? Want bright swordish tongues in return for the lesbian capital? Ah yes, right. Sorry, I've just been very busy lately. You know, being present makes you very busy. I must check something. You know, being a president makes you very busy. Indeed, I do know. So I don't have any issues with this deal. I think this deal will contribute nicely to the relationship between Lesbian and Swordland, despite a lack of ideological alignments. I will sign the executive order. Uh, that is excellent news. I am glad we are on the same page. He looked at the clock. I'm afraid I have to leave now to attend to other matters. Thank you for your visit. Perhaps we could advance this deal. What are your thoughts about an alliance? Mr. Rain, Mr. Rain, Mr. Rain, I don't think so. You should be glad that I'm a lenient man because... It's all because of that we were able to achieve a deal today. I wouldn't push it about you. Have a good day, Mr. Rain. On his way to the door, he suddenly turned around. Before I forget, you're me a teapot. He smiled and left the room. I thought he wasn't as drunk as he seemed. Yes, so we got the deal we needed. We didn't get the... Um, uh, the... Uh, alliance. But that moves us closer still, a little, to Arcasia. She's not bad. And should bring in some money. Forgive me, my wife has messaged me a couple of times. Swordland and Lesbia signed new trade agreement. Swordish government has officially signed a new economic partnership deal with Lesbia, making an important co uh, moment as the most major deal President Reign has finalised so far, the only one. The Sword and Lesbia Economic Partnership Agreement was signed by President Reign and Prime Minister Alvarez in Perla yesterday. The deal is tailored to benefit both economies with big benefits Swordish and Lesbian businesses. It also includes a strong commitment from Lesbia to support Swordland with Lesbian capital. This signing marks a new period of close relationship between Swordland and Lesbia, which will see two like-minded democracies working together. That should help the economy some, at least. Right, what else do we have? Anything else around? No. There's Lesbia. Nothing uh, coming up from them. Private meeting with Petter Vector, 137 Ruick Avenue, suburbs of Holsort. It was dark, chilly evening, when Petter called and asked if we could meet. He gave no details, all he said was that it was important. I drove alone through Halsort suburbs until I reached the meeting point he named. 147 Ruick Avenue, number six, uh, 26. Our old campaign headquarters, untouched since the night of the election. This was where everything began. I made my way up the dusty staircase of the office building. The light in the second floor hallway was out. So I used a cigarette lighter to find my way to the wooden door marked 26. I pulled on the handle, but it wouldn't budge. The heavy door had always been a pain to open. Coming, said Petter. Petter pushed on the door with all his weight. He made a screeching sound as it opened. Without further ado, I bid you welcome to this grand nostalgia trip. Host by yours truly, Petter Vector. He made an exaggerated bow. What are you playing at, Petter? 
The dust from the open door was still settling down. Feeling sentimental yet? No. Uh, not really, it's just an office. Well, I for one, I'm overflowing with nostalgia. Come over here, remember this? He walked over to his old desk and pointed to the gramophone that had annoyed our neighbours and kept us company for many late nights. Petter flipped the switch and it filled the room with swing music from the 20s. I'll be damned, it still works. Are you going to tell me why we are here? In a bit. He put his hand under the desk and brought a bottle out. Took a swig of it and passed the bottle to me. No, thank you. Come on, Anton, I insist. I'd rather not. Fine. Petter snapped his fingers to the music while going through the items in the room. It looked virtually unchanged since the election night. Come on, have a look around, see if it doesn't bring back memories. Go through the records. Made my way to the gramophone and started flicking through the records next to it. Found one of my favourite albums ever, Mountains by Janet Gers. A set of plenty of folk songs that made me yearn for the countryside whenever I heard it. What a classic. You should mail that to Frank so he can learn what real music is. I think I'll leave it. I left the record. Uh, my desk drawers. Walked over to all the old desk drawers, sat down in the squeaky chair and opened the top drawer. Inside were a few old coins, pencils and sheets of paper. Underneath, something caught my eye. It was a photograph of me and Monica sitting under a tree. This must have been 10, maybe 15 years ago. We looked so young and happy. Monica would love to see this. Nice find. Look at baby Anton. You didn't even have your iconic look. That we will take. Look through the storage boxes. In one of the storage boxes I found a heavy object wrapped safely. I unwrapped it. The reason I didn't take the record, frankly, um, is that the kid's entitled to his own music. It was an emerald coloured statue of a goat, a symbol of Sordland. I remember that this was a gift from Brenda, one of the 53 election campaign assistants. It would look good on my desk in the palace. Brenda, 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 always sucking up to you. And where did it get her? Seriously, where? I have no idea where she ended up. We'll take it. I looked at the storage box with the statue in it. The trouble is using that might upset my wife if, there was, if she saw Brenda as coming on to me. So I could take it on the way out. Although if I've done nothing to follow her, perhaps it won't. Enough going through old stuff, let's talk. Yes, yes, all in good time. It has been good time. He gestured the bottle he had in hand. No, I'm good. He shrugged, took a very deep, big gulp out of the bottle and staggered it to the side afterwards. <coughs> I know you're petter. What are you hiding? <coughs> Nothing. Let's go up to the roof. The view is always amazing from up there. Drunk as you are, I'm not sure that's a good idea, petter. We went up to the roof. The view was mesmerising. The buildings of Halsall twinkled below us, while the stars shone bright in the sky. We sat and leaned back against the wall, taking it all in. Right as I was starting to get up, I heard a sobbing sound. I turned to Petter and saw tears streaming down his cheeks. <coughs> <coughs> What's wrong? He wiped the tears away. I messed up, Anton. I messed up big time. Evelyn's leaving me. She wants a divorce. What the hell did you do? I have been sleeping with Livia Suno. <coughs> You've been what? I know she's your secretary. I'm sorry said Petter. It's just Evelyn hasn't been the same since she lost her job and Libby was giving me sultry looks from the day I eyed her. You were away. I was drunk. One thing led to another. But she's more than just a pretty girl, Anton. She's smart and... Ca yes, and you're married. People... Uh, I won't say make mistakes. People fuck up. Excuse the language. People fuck up. But if you're not going to fix it, then that's more than just a fuck up. If you're not going to fix it with Evelyn, you don't deserve her. 
You also don't deserve Livia if that's the kind of game you're going to play. I hate men will be men or boys will be boys. Uh, how could you do this to me? I like it too. That doesn't mean I break my vows and risk a scandal for a bit of horizontal polo. Don't tell me you're going to run off with her. No, no, we're ending things. I told her it's too unprofessional and I want Evelyn back. <laughs> Maybe a bit late for that. Uh, they don't know who else knows. Because he has no idea who Evelyn might have told, or who Livia might have told. It's too late, there's a chance this could get out, I need to talk to Lucian. Anton, please, I'm begging you. There was an edge of desperation in Petter's voice. He took another drink. How many years have we known each other? How many scrapes have we gotten ourselves out of? I can hound this, just trust me. I turned to face my friend and vice president. The habits that had gotten him dubbed bad boy of Saudi politics when we were young were no longer so charming coming out of a middle-aged man. Honestly, they wouldn't have been charming back then. To anyone with a, with a mind worth mention, worth thinking about. Yet he was still a capable politician and I couldn't ignore our long history together. Yeah, I have a feeling he set us up though. I'm not going to do the first one. I'm thinking between the second or the third. I don't know if I can trust him to fix it. I'll handle it myself. Without waiting for a reaction, I left the rooftop alone and made my way downstairs. On my, uh, my way out, I grabbed my belongings and took one last look back at the office. I've been home some happy memories for sure, but this visit had permanently cured me of any nostalgia. As soon as I arrived home, I headed to my study, sat down and stared at the telephone. First step, call Evelyn. I picked up the phone and dialed Petter's home number. Evelyn answered after a few rings. Anton, it's late. Is everything all right? I told her what I knew about her, Petter and Livia. Oh. She was silent for so long I thought she might have hung up. Whatever you have to say it won't change my mind. No, none of these. No. No. <sighs> All of these are blaming her as the victim or supporting him. The reason I called was to offer support All I wanted to do was offer support, not to support Petter. This is almost worse than demanding that I be a blunt object when it comes to dealing with immigration. Many other things. This particular one has me very close to not continuing the run. Since it has some popularity, I will continue it though. I just have to find something I don't find completely appalling in this ridiculous offering here. He's in tears when we talked. He's already ended it, can't you? I'm not going to press her to forgive him. It was just a harmless flirtation. No, it wasn't. Don't you understand? If you compliment someone on their dress, that's a harmless flirtation. Perhaps. When you fuck someone, it's not a harmless flirtation. The number one is at least accurate. I don't think it's something I would say, but all right. Evelyn gave a short, sharp laugh. Do you know Petra at all? Really know him. Livia wasn't the first and she won't be the last. There's always going to be another be beautiful young woman for him to prey on. These are terrible offerings. If there's a third like this, I will not be continuing the run. 
because this is offensively bad offerings for what I can do. This is pushing me down one road that I have no intention of going down. It is a use of position of power, and she may have been willing, but there's still an argument that could be made for being preyed on. Not fair. No, it's it's fair. He has a wandering eye. You knew that when you married him. That at least is true. I thought I could help curb his worst impulses, but it obviously wasn't true. Look at whom he goes after. Secretaries, kitchen staff, aides. Remember Brenda? What do they have in common? When the vice president asks them for sex, they might lose their job if they refuse. Yes. I'd go to the media about this if I wasn't persona non grata at the Holtzard Post. And if there was a shred of a chance, I'd be taken seriously. For the very least, I will not no longer be an accomplice to his abuse of power. I agree, and frankly, I told him, neither should you. I agree. Evelyn hung up without waiting me for me to respond. I took a minute to think of what she had said. And I'm going to call Lucian. I am so close to not continuing this after that offensive offering. If I wanted to go that way, I would do, but and I have no objection to someone playing down that route. But when that's all you offer, that's wrong. Still holding the receiver, I dialed Lucian's number. He picked up very quickly. Yes, Mr. President. I told Lucian everything Petter had told me about. Himself, Evelyn and Livia. Thank you for calling me, Mr. President. This has uh, confirmed some suspicions of my own. We have to meet. Right now? Tomorrow morning in the office, early, before either of the two arrive. Don't bring this up with anyone else. I fear we may have more than a mere dalliance in our hands. Yes, we know this. The line dropped. I stared at the receiver, wondering what his last statement meant. What was going on that I didn't know about? I went to bed but couldn't sleep at all. I think, given their friends, my wife needs to know as well. That is not something... It's... Not that it could affect me in the state it could, of course. But it's not something you keep from your wife. I am so upset that it offered only those options and not a genuine offering of support for Evelyn. That was ridiculous. It's not that those options exist that's ridiculous. You can go that way. I have no objection to that. You can be a sleazeball. That's fine, that's a valid story. But to stop someone not being a sleazeball, that's wrong. National Business Council warns of excessive spending. The NBC offer, uh, issued a critical warning about the massive government budget deficit, which occurred in the third year of the administration. Leadership figures from the private and state sectors brought forward uh, complaints that the country could head towards serious debt crisis if the situation is left unchecked. Experts have sounded the alarm about a potential credit rating downgrade in this situation if a better balance won't be achieved soon. The economy has recovered some. Alright, this will be the meeting. Over to the presence of Swordland Maroon Palace. It was early in the morning after my talk with Petter. The sun was just beginning to peak over the horizon. The Maroon Palace. And the reason I would say talk to my wife. Yes, this has definite um, political implications. But it has extremely strong personal implications first. And they are friends, or were. The Maroon Palace was empty save for a few cleaning staff. I entered my office to find Lucian already awaiting for me. And by the way, I should also add that another part of it is... Telling my wife doesn't have any extra political implications over this getting out. Monica should have been informed long before going to see Lucian. The Maroon Palace was empty save for a few cleaning staff. I entered my office to find Lucian already waiting for me. Mr. President, thank you for meeting with me at this hour. I couldn't sleep anyway. Very well, I'm pleased that you chose to call me after your conversation with Mr. Vector last night. Although I was already aware of his illicit relationship with Miss Suno. I figured as much. You do know everything that goes on in the palace, after all. Lucian smiled. On its own, given Mr. Vector's established reputation, 
as something of a playboy. The affair is unlikely to cause much damage. However, a more troubling possibility has been brought to light. A recent conversation with Mr. Hailstone, a whistleblower from Rumberg, revealed the presence of a spy within the Maroon Palace. I believe Mizuno is our mole. She has been using her relationship with Miss DeVetturn to gather information. Tell me more. That's not something laughable, that's something absolutely believable. I also don't trust that Lucian himself hasn't been turned. I can do better than that, I'll show you. Lucian reached into his coat pocket, pulled out an audio tape and fed it into the reel-to-reel -reel machine on my desk. This was recorded in the palace at 1809, on the second day of your trade visit to Lesbia. He pressed play, I heard Petra and Livia's voices. You are sure everyone's gone for the day? asked Livia. Relax, Liv, said Petter. Nobody's working that hard with presents Dickupy's ass off in the sp <clears throat> Okay. Livia giggled. I heard the sound of kissing, then of drinks being poured. Hmm, I'm glad you stayed behind, she said. Did he tell you how it's going over there? Do you think there's a chance they'll form an alliance? No, doesn't seem like it, said Petter. Although we've still got a shot with the superpowers. There's talk of a possible cooperation. But enough work talk, Miss Suno. I want you bent over my desk, now. Lucian grimaced and switched off the tape. In itself, that's not damning evidence. But it is cause for concern. Then what happened? You don't need to hear the rest of it. The important question is why so much curiosity about these political alliances, if not because they could strengthen us against Romberg. Uh, that's a bit of a uh, jump, to be honest. She's working in a political office. She would have an interest. And that's not all. I found her resume on your file. On file. And there's a year-long gap between her finishing secretarial school and beginning her career. Normally this would have been looked into, but Masuno was hired before a background check could be completed by one Petter Vector. Just then there was a knock at the door. Livia opened it cautiously. Good morning, Mr. President. Mr. Gallard. I didn't realise you'd be in so early. Can I get you some coffee? I'll see what... Um, tempt, I'm not going to say coffee would be great. Um, I'm between closing the door and have a seat. Or wait for Lucian to say something. I'll wait for Lucian. Please have a seat. Okay. Olivia sat. She looked puzzled. Is something the matter? I know pretending your secret is out. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Come on, Livia. No. Uh, Petra already told me everything. Livia buried her face in her hands. So sorry, Mr. President, I was foolish and Petra was so nice to me. But it's over now. Nobody ever needs to know. That's not what the President means, Miss Suno. By referring to being an intelligence agent for Romberg. Livia sat upright. She looked shocked. Pardon me, Mr. Clyde, but are you feeling all right? He's fine. What do you have to say for yourself? Mr. President, I understand if you don't want me to keep my job, but why smear me with outlandish accusations? Miss Suno, indulge me for a moment. What were you doing in the year 1951? Livia's face flushed. If you must know, I was working as a cigarette girl at Porto's. It's a Lackhaven saloon. I was saving up so I could afford my own place in Hallsword. Here's a proprietor's number if you need to double check. She scribbled a telephone number on a piece of paper. Lucian snatched it up. Why so many questions about what I do? Tell the truth, Mr. Rain. I was hoping to run for office myself someday. I want to make a real difference in the world like Ms. Morgna and Ms. Walder. But I guess I messed that up by getting involved with Peter. Now they're all just going to say I slept my way to the top. And you're questioning Petra about Sodom's potential alliances? I told you I... Wait, how do you know about that? There was a loud pounding on the door. Petra barged in without waiting for an answer. It was unshaven and wore the same clothes as the night before. Honestly, I think she's innocent. I'm going with the fact that it's Petter who's outright the traitor. 
I came as soon as I heard the three of you were in here. Anton, what the hell are you doing? I told you I had this under control. Sit down and shut up. Petter took a seat on the far end of the sofa. He looked over at Livia and noticed her troubled expression. God, why involve her? This is my mess. She did nothing wrong. Hmm. I think she's innocent and Petta is the double agent. Or, yeah, probably a double agent would still count. I don't know how strong he is for that. Well, there's a small chance she could be a spy. I'm not going to say preposterous idea because it's not. She's a spy, Petta. You messed up big time. There's number one or there's number three. Number two is not where we're going. Um... If he cares about her at all, or if I, hmm, if I outright accuse her, there's a chance that if he is the spy, something will out that will tip his hat. That just shows a, a concern that might hide, make him hide more. All right, she's a spy, Petty. You messed up big time. I what? I have reason to believe she's been relaying information to Rumberg. Information that you leaked to her in your carelessness. Lucian rewound the tape and played it again as Petter listened, his eyes widened in disbelief. Lucian, you rat bastard, you've been bugging my office! Obviously for a good reason. Both Petter and Livia were glaring at Lucian now. He looked unrepentant. I had noticed the Vice President's behaviour becoming increasingly erratic and unprofessional over the past months. So had I. I wanted to get to the root of the cause. So you wiretapped your own goddamn colleague, and for what? Have you been getting off on this, you pervert? Certainly not. I believe that along with the Rumberg whistleblower's admission, that there is a spy in the palace, and certain gaps in Miss Suno's resume, this tape makes a compelling case to investigate the Secretary for Espionage. Whether or not the investigation yields positive results, Mr. Vecturn, Ought to be held, uh, Mr. Vector ought to be held accountable for his willingness to divulge such sensitive information. He ought to stand trial, or at least, at the very least, resign. Petter's jaw dropped. Livia stood up. If I may, Mr. President, I've been paying attention to what goes on in the palace. Not because I'm some sort of agent, because of genuine interest. Hard as that may be for you to believe, Mr. Gallard. She scowled at Lucy and then turned back to me. And from what I've seen, this man has been attempting to undermine your Vice President at every turn. Perhaps with the goal of replacing Petter himself. It is an interesting point. My thinking is it is Petter, but it could be Lucian. I'm beginning to know how Joseph Stalin felt. Uh, not that that's ever justifiable. Not that Stallion's actions could ever be justified. That's, of course you'd say that Petter's your lover. Livia looked at Petter on the other end of the couch, her eyes softened. He was my lover, but we put this behind us. The two of you ought to do so as well. Lucian frowned. My personal misgivings about Mr. Vector aside, I would never do anything to harm this administration. Mr. Vecton, on the other hand, has been best, has at best committed adultery and at worst delivered state secrets into the enemy hands. Who could I believe? Lucian, can I speak to you for a moment? Petra and Livia had exchanged forward glances before exiting my office. What are you going to do, Miss President? If I have any concerns about him, I'm not going to trust him totally. Um, we should investigate Livia. We should investigate them both, honestly. I'm, I'm not keen on, on these options either. Uh, Lucian breathes a sigh of relief. I appreciate your trust in me. And Mr. Vecton, what will you do about his willingness to compromise Sordland's security at the drop of a pencil skirt? No, he didn't do what any man would. I'll decide that once we have the results. 
But anyway, I'll just keep in mind you may need him to shoulder the blame for this. Lucian adjusted his tie. I'll apologise to Masuna and tell her this has all been a misunderstanding. We can't have her running away during the investigation. No, I'll do it myself. She's too suspicious of you. Very well, sir. Lucian gave a slight bow as he left the office. I sat by myself wondering what exactly I had set in motion. Indeed. Indeed. And... No reports. We look at the results of the affair scandal. Office of the President of Swordland, Maroon Palace. Several days had passed since I ordered the investigation into my secretary, Livia Suno. Both Petra and Livia had been acting unnaturally, uh, unnaturally nice to me. Yes, I know. I'm not surprised. Believing I'd let them off the hook for their affair. They seemed to be avoiding each other in the hallways, though. I was just settling in behind my desk when Lucian knocked on my door. Sir, a moment of your time. Come in. Our security team travelled to Lackhaven to speak to the owners of the pub Mr. S uh, Miss Suno named. They confirmed that one Livia Suno had worked there. Their description of her did not match that of your secretary. However, it did match that of an unidentified corpse that washed up in Lenkirk Bay two months before your inauguration. Are you sure about this? Yeah, it's all on the report from our intelligence officers. Further investigation by our operatives in Rumberg matched Miss Suno's description to a woman named Ilana Vance, last seen graduating from Krimsrad Political Sciences Institute. A whistleblower from Rumberg recognised the name Vance as belonging to a deeply embedded covert agent, although he had previously assumed it was a man. How could we have missed all this? As mentioned, Miss Suno was hired without a background check. It's possible this could all have been avoided if any of Mr. Vecturn's blood flow had been directed to his brain when he selected her. But none of that can be helped. Now the question is, what are you going to do, sir? I'm going to murder them both. I like that option, but no. I'm going to have Petra castrated. His wife might like that. Uh... They both need to go down, but we need more. All of this is could be explained through other, other reasons. Oh, I'd actually like to talk to the people myself to find out if this is a valid uh, report as well, rather than something he's jumped up. What do you think I should do? The standard procedure would be to try Miss Suno for espionage. If we do so, it's only a matter of time. All the media pieces together what happened. No, I, I'm not going to say that. It looks... I look a fool for having her under my nose this entire time. Outwitted by a woman, it won't look good. I'm not saying that. What if there were no trial? No. I'm not going to be unjust. Easy, I'll get Marcel on it. Asking Mr. Caronte for help would be advisable, but you'll still have to do a fair amount of crisis management. Uh, yourself. Starting by letter, letting Petter Vecton take the fall. Petter did a lot of things wrong. Why am, why are you limiting my choices this much? None of these support me getting it's like removing Petter. This is my fault. No, it's not my fault as much as it's. I know his actions were problematic. An understatement. Mr. Vecton put you in danger by failing to order a background check on the, your closest personal staff. He betrayed your confidence to a woman with whom he was committing adultery. And some would you do the same to your so-called best friend. Also wouldn't badmouth my best friend, call him present stick in the ass. No, I wouldn't. Lucian sighed. I'm your chief strategist, so I advise you on what I believe is the best strategy, but of course, the ultimate decision is yours.
Petter can be our scapegoat. Very well, I shall consult with our friend Ma Ms. Uh, Mr. Coranti and write a, a statement for you to read at the press conference. I'll leave you to handle must advance. With pleasure. Lucian nodded and walked out. I called Carl Grazer from my desk, explained the situation. After a few minutes, I rang for Olivia. She entered my office. Is there something you need, Mr. President? You tell me, Ilana. A bale of perceptible flash of fear crossed her face. Livia, sir. My name is Livia. I nodded toward my office doorway. Carl Grazer was standing there along with his, two of his guards, blocking the entrance. Ilana Vance, you are under arrest for, on suspicion of espionage. Please come with me. Her eyes darted around the room. What the hell is going on? Mr. Presence, have you let Lucian get to your head? I thought you were smarter than that. You're going to pay for your lies, Ilana. Carl's men grabbed her arms and began dragging her out. No, no, you can't do this to me. Peter, hearing her cries, rushed into the office. Liv, what the hell? Anton, what's going on? Her name's Ilana, Lucian. You were right about her. Illusion was right about her. She's a spy. Livia, tell Petter who you really are. I won't say another word without a lawyer present. She looked Petter square in the eyes. Except this, you're a sad old drunk and a lousy lay. Well, well, well. Honestly, if I were a Rumberg spy, I'd barely have to do a thing. You two have Swordland ripe for the taking. She straightened up, ran her hand through her curls and allowed Carl to lead her away. Petter sank to the floor in front of me. Anton, what the hell just happened? Come to my office, you're making a scene out here. Once Petter was in my office, I shut the door and explained everything Lucian had told me about Livia. And you believed him? Well, better safe than sorry, especially after what she called me. At least we finally have this ordeal behind us. You don't. Let's get on with running the country, shall we? Actually, I have something to tell you. Yeah, what is it? I want you to resign. Petter looked up at me. His expression was numb. I, I guess I deserve this, don't I? Yes. Your philandering put us all in danger. He exhaled slowly. I could see tears in his eyes. I'm so sorry, Anton. I was never cut out for this job. No, you weren't. You were cut out for a previous job, maybe. But not this one. You really weren't, but at least you got a... No. Uh, yes, that's the closest. Unless Evelyn takes it in the divorce... I've got to prepare for the Ferris conference. I suggest you do the same. All right, I get the message but first. He grabbed the bottle of Elrin Maroon, 30-year-old, from the shelf behind my desk. To new beginnings. He drained a third of the bottle in one long swig, then got to his feet and unsteadily made his way to the outdoor. door. I knew this was for the, for the best, but I hoped my friend would be all right. I'm thinking we'll be moving on to the next chapters. I'm thinking we'll be moving on to the next chapter soon. Pressure leaves for the affair scandal. It was the moment of Livia's trial, and hordes of reports were gathering in front of the state courthouse. Petter, Lucian and I stood by the entrance. Lucian had helped break the news of my secretary's arrest. Now the media was beginning to question exactly how a Rumberg agent had been able to infiltrate the Maroon Palace, so it was time for me to deliver an explanation. A podium with a bank of microphones awaited us on the count courthouse steps. Peter looked uncertain. I told him I would be doing all the talking today. Remember what we talked about, Mr. President? How could I forget? I was about to blame my best friend for a scandal that would otherwise shatter my administration. Peter hadn't said a word to me since I broke the news to him in my office. Together we stepped behind the podium, the reporters clustered around us and started shouting questions. Please settle down. As you're aware, Olivia Suno, former secretary of the President of Sodland, is currently being tried for espionage. As you're aware, Ilana Vance, the Rumberg spy who posed as my secretary, is currently on trial for espionage. The traitor shall be brought to justice. However, the fact remains that she should never been allowed to infiltrate our administration in the first place. 
that she did can be directly traced to the carelessness of one man. Petter Vector As journalists gasped and murmured, Petter turned to me, his mouth hanging open. Lingus put his own full title, his eyes over Southern security has made him a threat to the state. Therefore, the Vice President shall be trialled for this shame for his shameful actions against the state. If found guilty, he will be imprisoned. Wait, just a... Uh, I put my hand on his mic and gestured to Carl Geisa, who was waiting off, hand, off stage. He and his men approached Petter. How could you do this to me? I know I screwed up, but I'm on prison. Stop acting like this whole chain of events wasn't your fault. Carl and his men grabbed Petter's arms. You answer and you hear me fuck. The clamour of reporters drowned out his screams he was led away. Mr. President, I'll take exactly one question. Mr. P uh, President Rain, were you implying that Mr. Vector and the covert agent posing as your secretary were engaged in intimate relations? Yes. We were aware of this when it was happening. Gesture to Lucian and end the press conference. Lucian interjected, The President will not be taking further questions. Thank you. The reporters reluctantly dispersed. Lucian and I looked at each other for a moment. Mr. Vecton certainly made a scene where it appears you will be making out of this unscathed. Of course, there's now the matter of replacing both your Secretary and your Vice President. A joke might help here, but you're a little old to be my secretary, Lucian. Very funny, sir. We walk back up the stairs to the courthouse to watch the rest of the trial. Selection of new vice presidents, huh? The whole sword post. Rumberg infiltrated Maroon Palace, President's secretary arrested. Breaking news from the Maroon Palace Presidential Secretary Olivia Suno has just been revealed to be a spy from Rumberg. More details are forthcoming, but it appears the agent, whose real name is not yet known. I'm named her. Uh, managed to get past the palace's staff stringent background checks and obtained confidential information from within Rain's administration. The President has taken swift decisive action to remove her from her position and bring her to justice. President's secretary arrested for treason. Livia Suno, secretary to President Anton Rain, was arrested yesterday following an investigation that revealed her to be a covert agent from Rumberg. Her trial is scheduled to begin in the next several days. In the meantime, the question of how an enemy spy was able to infiltrate the Maroon Palace on such a high level remains. President Rain has announced he will be holding a press conference to address this potentially brewing scandal. And we will return next time to select a new vice president and to receive a briefing on the women's rights situation. Are there any other reports around at the moment, I wonder? No. Just that. All right. Thank you for joining me for Tales Over Coffee. I've been Yorkie the Tail Spinner. You've been a fine audience. And this has been Suzerain. Fairly well. <laughs>